In this video, we review the Hesvigen HBT 2000 Pro SD, a 200 amp TIG welder. Uh, we'll cover things like setup and adjustments on the TIG welder, what we liked about it, and gotchas that we found. We'll show examples of how it welded. Uh, I've been using it for months now at low and high amps on TIG and stick. And the short review, it's definitely worth the price. We're very happy with it out of the box, but there are gotchas. Uh, and in my opinion, some alterations, this can become an awesome TIG stick welder. P.S. Some of the gotchas were our own doing or misunderstandings. Uh, to, them, to you, they may not be a gotcha. HBT 2000 Pro SD from Hisvigen. It's a DC TIG welder that is dual voltage capable. It has a minimum amp rating of 10 up to 200 maximum depending on your input voltage. We purchased it on eBay at a sale price of $237 which included free shipping. An important heads up for this review. I have never had a TIG welder before. In fact, I have never TIG welded before. So, this review and everything you see in it, keep that in mind. Uh, I'm a learning, and I think this is a great machine because I think it's better to learn on a good machine. Hooking up our TIG welder. First thing we did was attach a hose to the rear with the clamp, it just slides on. The other hose goes to a argon tank as a dual regulator. We're only going to be using one for now. We have two so that we can do purging inside of a stainless steel tubing exhaust, but we don't need that for now. So we just have the one hose uh, hooked up. This is a very small unit. It can run on 110 or 220. We're running it on 110, but as you can see, we're running it on a 110, 120 that's equipped for higher amperage. That's why it has the extra slot in the, like the T slot on the one side. So this is on a circuit breaker that's larger than normal for a 120. Things with the TIG welder is the airflow uh, that doesn't get disturbed. So it looks like there's inlets on the front and perhaps on the side with the fan blowing out the back. So we want to keep that away from where we're welding and putting it down next to the gas cylinder moves it out of the way the airflow is completely away from where we are uh, and it also allows us to be able to look at either and see what the outputs are showing us it's not inconvenient it's a little bit lower but that's good like I just mentioned because of the airflow now when we turn this on the switch is on the back The fan is, uh, you can hear it. It's no worse than any computer fan. Not crazy loud, but it, it's there. Um, the adjustment knob actually has small dentons in it, which I like. We have to hook up the rest of our equipment. Oh, actually, now that it's on, I can feel, yeah, there's flow in front. There's flow out that side, so glad I didn't put this up on the table. Because if we had put it up here, there would have been airflow, there would have been airflow coming out this way. There's quite a bit of airflow from this. So having it down here 
away from everything is definitely a good idea. When we, uh, back up to 120, when you turn it off to protect all the electronics, it runs for, uh, I guess about 10 seconds, and then it'll shut down, so uh, just be cautious that when you turn it off, it doesn't shut off immediately. There we go. For the rear hose, from the tank to the rear of the unit, the 8 millimeter hose instead of 7 millimeter doesn't fit on the 7 millimeter fittings they give you. New hose, 7 millimeter hose, air hose that we put on here uh, and clamp seems to be working fine. The front hose, if you notice, to tighten this, you'd have to hold that nut there. Well, there's no way to get to that because of these. It's surrounded on all sides, so you can't get a, uh, a wrench on it to hold it. And, as you can see, it's loose in the chassis, too. Now, I don't know if there's a nut behind there or not, but basically you have to take the whole thing apart to be able to look at this and or fix it. Next thing is putting this on. There's a, uh, you can see there's an indent for it, so you only can put it on the one way. But uh, still have to push pretty hard. You're trying to get your fingers in there to tighten this as well. There's no room because of these and the case itself and then the hose below. If you already have these cables on, it's almost impossible to put these on. So always put the gas line on first and then uh, the connector for the switch or the foot pedal. The, uh, they have little symbols for the grounding strap and for the torch. Uh, and to put these in, you have to push them a little bit, push in a little bit to get them. And there's the notch so that they go in properly, corresponding notch. This cable stick up a little bit. Put them underneath. Ground clamp cable is fairly short. I guess it's about six feet. The torch cable, though, on the other hand, is quite long. least 12 feet um, it's it's stiff and kind of heavy I knew that going into it and it has the uh, all the controls on the handle that's part of it so it's got it's got uh, at least three wires running through it the gas line the electrical connection and then the large uh, power line going through it. it does have the swivel end on it which is nice short tail on it uh, and call it we'll be changing that out see the steps as we up and down and these are adjustments areas okay we press this now we're on MMA stick welding press it again it goes up to the top and the top is uh, TIG pulse welding press this and now we're down to TIG regular standard TIG welding if we press this 
we can toggle between 2T, 4T, and spot welding. Okay, we have the welder set up to regular TIG, which allows us uh, to do spot welding. And if we go through the menu cycle, right now it shows pre-flow as set at zero, there's none. If we hit the menu, parameter selection, it jumps up to peak amps. The other parameters in between are not needed because this is for spot welding. So it, it would hit the spot weld at 68, and then if we hit it again, it just goes to the uh, final parameter, which is post flow, which is set at uh, five seconds. If we hit this again, it takes us to this parameter, which is how long the spot weld is on, uh, how long we want a spot weld for. So we can, right now it's one, two seconds, three. So one should be fine. We'll start out with that and we'll try that. Okay, now if we switch from DC TIG the DC pulse we need to change from spot weld to 2T or 4T if we go to T, 2T then you can see it's cycling through all the parameters so we can set our pre-flow we can set our starting amps the upslope the peak amps, the base amps, this is what it's going to sit at, and then the uh, downslope, this is in seconds, the ending amps, and then the post flow, how long that's going to be. If we go to 4T and we cycle through these parameters, we have the hot start, but we have our same thing. We have the pre-flow, starting amps, the upslope, how long it's going to take, the peak amps, um, the base amps, the downslope, how long that's going to take, and what the bottom amps are, and then the post-flow, how long the flow is going to be on. On the torch itself, you can see there's a, a TIG start and a down and an up. Okay, we have the machine set to DC straight TIG. And if you see, it's at 67. And if we pressed these buttons, 69, 70, 71. So this allows us to control without having to come back to the machine and make an adjustment. We can do it right on the handle. I don't like the torch handle that much. I mentioned that before, I think, because you can accidentally crank up or crank down uh, by hitting one of the buttons. And I don't... When you want to do it, that's fine, but the fact it's it's easy to do uh, is not good. doing our spot welds here. There's going to be deflection no matter what you do. So uh, by moving these and taking a spot weld, moving the C-clamp, taking a spot weld, actually we're not we're tacking, we're not spot welding. We're tacking with our TIG torch. And uh, this is new metal. This is the old metal. You can see up here all this rusted pitted stuff. But we still were able to uh, tack it pretty good with our, our TIG welder. 
We also tacked the inside of this, so. It's uh, good penetration. And the tacks we did on the back, so th this is really on solid. Uh, of the uh, front upright pillars that the uh, inner fenders are part of. Uh, it's going pretty well. We had to cut this piece out. This was this is all rusted out and everything. And uh, we bent up a new one and weld that in. Used a TIG welder. Uh, put the bolt hole in and a spacer. Uh, instead of spot welding here, we did one spot weld on each side here, but we did seam welds instead along this edge. So this edge on both sides is completely seam welded with the TIG welder. And this extra piece to the front inner fender, uh, did the outside. Very happy with these welds. Uh, this is a little bit bigger and wider. And here I've got them a little bit smaller. And then here's a section that's, it's, I would guess, what I would call almost perfect. Uh, even these I like because it, it's, there's, there's no edge. You don't even have to grind these. Uh, there's a couple spots that contamination came through and started popping, so it made it rough to weld. We've uh, tacked one of our bra brackets, new motor to frame um, mounts. This is quarter inch, our TIG welder possibly could do it, but it's gonna kill it and we wanna make sure we have really good uh, welds on this. We're running a uh, 30 amp heavy duty extension cords, it's 10 gauge all the way out, uh, it's 100 foot. And then we're plugging our AC, DC, our uh, 120, 110, 240 volt welder into it. And you can see right now, uh, it's at top voltage on 220 is 170. Uh, on 110 it would have been 90. So, uh, we should be able to use this to weld up, uh, using the stick weld features on this, to weld up our brackets. Our friend came over and uh, welded the plates to the frame for us, using our TIG welder. We had 220 out here for it, but uh, he ended up using 7014 rod uh we had eighth inch and three thirty seconds he used the three thirty seconds on this uh, and because he was using the, the thinner rod he was running about 90 amps uh, i was watching it so might have got away with the 110 but uh, it was probably better uh, he said it was super smooth welder it was just one of the smoothest welders he's ever used for the igbt type so that's an endorsement of this welder as well and though it's a, we bought it for the TIG, obviously it's a great stick welder. Finally, some uh, final thoughts. Pros, cons, gotchas, and uh, our rating. Um, we've already mentioned there are two big gotchas. The first was the provided 8mm gas hose that is loose on the 7mm barbs. Uh, that was fixable. Uh, we just had to get a 7mm hose. It would be nice if they provided one. They provide you with four clamps, and that's probably because they know it's going to leak. I, I think it'd be better just to provide the right hose. Uh, the second one was the buttons on the handles, which we showed you. I thought initially that was a plus, that I could just adjust at the, the handle. But even with thinner gloves that you use when TIG welding, I was inadvertently, because you're looking at the where you're welding and I inadvertently every once in a while would adjust either up or down and then I'd notice it because I blew a hole through something and so the the feature of doing testing on scrap pieces 
went out the window. So uh, I didn't like that handle. Also, the provided WP26 torch that that handle is on, while it's a nice length, I like the 12 foot, uh, and it's heavy duty, it likewise is very heavy and stiff. So eventually in the future, I'll replace the, the torch with a, a nice flexible lighter one without the uh, controls on the handle. And I'll just have a uh, tappable on off that I can use for 2T or 4T. But uh, it's usable and it's heavy duty, um, which when I even when I was doing the uh, quarter inch plate uh, on 110, you could feel the heat. Or I should say you didn't feel any heat because uh, the torch was set up for it. The last gotcha <clears throat> isn't a, well, it's kind of a secret gotcha. The manual shows a pedal. The welder on the front has a five pin connector. However, we looked all over and we couldn't find uh, that pedal. The manufacturer doesn't sell it. His vision doesn't sell a pedal for it. Not here in the States anyway. And nobody else does. Now, I found connectors so I may rewire uh, our, and make a special cable or, the, or make a special torch holes completely from start to finish. And if we do, we'll include that in another video. But... Uh, this isn't a deal breaker, none of these are, but they're just, we wanted to let you know. This machine did everything I needed it to do. Uh, rating wise, I would give this a, a four. One, again, I, I, I've never TIG welded before, I haven't used any other TIG machines, so I have nothing to go by except the fact that there were some gotchas, so I can't give it a five. But the price was phenomenal. The shipping was great. It has a two-year warranty, and nobody else did that, or few others did that, especially for this price, on a Pulse TIG welder with all the controls that this has. Uh, I would gladly go out and buy this again. Uh, and I think you will not be... I uh, think this is a good choice for pretty much anybody. Like my professional welder said uh, when he was using the stick feature, it welded super smooth. You could hear it was like beautiful bacon <laughs> and uh, he really liked it so that is an endorsement I think from someone other than a novice newbie who doesn't know what they're doing yeah this is the instruction manual and they can they vary all over the place um, <clears throat> it's really strange because the for us the, the preface and the uh, general introduction, product functions, appear to have been written uh, very well. The English uh, is correct. The grammar is correct. The wording is easy to follow and read. They have some diagrams in here, too, in this section. And then uh, there's... Uh, page about the specs for the machine, the weights, the uh, voltage and stuff. When you get to the installation and the hookups, then it starts getting a little bit more like, okay, this was written in another language language, and translated to English because uh, the grammar is not quite correct. Uh, one of the things we want to note while we're in here uh, is the, one of the things is in the installation manual there's a pedal switch but the with some instructions on hooking it up but we could not find one from the manufacturer to purchase uh, so not quite sure about that they do have the standard five pin on the machine so you, you would think you would be able to hook up a pedal okay so in addition to this uh, pedal switch note they go into pretty good detail about what each of the steps are on the menus on the uh, front of the face and then they actually explain what the menus are but again while they explain it the translation to English uh, can be a little 
bit difficult and it shows the 2t and the 4t and explains that and again it's a little bit confusing in some spots uh, they do show some examples of welding uh, they have some uh, a lot of tables in here it's, it's that we thought was kind of nice they give you lots of table information for welding uh, in TIG and in stick mode, MMA mode. And there's a troubleshooting section at the end, of course, too, which is uh, fairly extensive. Some common maintenance.